Hey everybody, I'm really excited to bring you some news today. Uh, today the Anycubic Viper FDM printer was launched uh, on pre-order and I um, was able to get in on the pre-order. I'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, I'm going to get a little bit into why I picked this printer, what other printers I looked at, uh, the reasons why I, I moved forward as a a uh, person who has been using a resin printer, SLA uh, Mono X printer, why I also decided that this kind of needed to be in my collection. And um, and that once this arrives, I'm going to do uh, a lot of uh, comparisons between uh, between FDM and, and SLA, and, and we'll talk a lot about a bit about that. But uh, I think it's important to um, talk about this great new printer that launched today from Anycubic for pre-order. Uh, and it should be here the end of the month. Uh, I did order it, and I'm excited about it. Uh, some of the key r reasons why I went with this. So I was looking at an Ender um, uh, Pro, uh, three Ender 3 Pro, um, but when I was looking at the Ender and a couple of other uh, couple of other printers, but Ender is probably I would say one of the one of the um, great um, printers in this price point highly modifiable uh, but there are a couple of things about the Anycubic Viper that really drew me to it especially for the price point so uh, and you can see some of the uh, some of the technical specs here which I'm sure everybody's probably interested in as far as the build volume and uh, resolution nozzle speed the type of filaments that it that it uses all of those were absolutely uh, considerations for my choice in this particular printer but what I like about this is it comes with several upgrades that I consider essential so if I were to purchase a Ender Pro uh, for example there are a couple of things I would want to uh, do right away and that has to do with a couple of things these 2209 um, stepper motor drivers aren't just they call them silent driver um, uh, chips but the the critical piece of these 2209 chips is how it accomplishes the quietness uh, and it accomplishes that by giving more um, granularity more res resolution in the motor movement so what is what is a stepper driver I'll see if I can get a good picture of uh, of these. I guess you can see it, and you can see these axes, right? So you've got these two big screw rods on either side of of the printer. You can't see them here; they're they're kind of hidden. But uh, you have you have these two long rods. They're threaded, and the Z axis is moved by moving a motor that's on either side of this and there's these rods are sort of behind here uh, when when that happens there's a little chip on the motherboard uh, in in older models I think it's 4480 or, or something like that I'll, I'll have to get the exact number but in any event uh, there's a chip on the motherboard that controls those motors those motors have a certain uh, number of steps that it can move incrementally move the motor that turns the screws which in turn moves this z-axis up and down okay uh, the old stepper chips uh, the 44 I believe they're 4480 I'm gonna keep saying for 4480 even if it's wrong uh, uh, those are limited to a particular um, let's say resolution or granularity uh, the the 2209 is has much greater resolution if you if you think of it in in a way of resolution much greater resolution or or uh, micro steps if you will tiny movements that it it can accomplish by way of having smaller number of movements it makes it quieter but it also makes it smoother it makes it more uh, precise as far as being able to move this print head up and down on the z-axis in a much higher number of tiny 
movements along this z-axis. So uh, I consider that uh, some people might be like, yeah, whatever, big deal. It's just a newer chip. It's not. It's it's a. I would consider that an essential um, upgrade. Now, on something like the Ender, they are replaceable. On something like the Viper, they are soldered on. So um, if a much better chip comes out than the 2209 down the road, you're kind of stuck with uh, you're stuck with those 2209s unless you want to uh, either replace the entire motherboard or you know get into soldering these small chips off. I believe they're soldered. Uh, like I said, I don't have this uh, printer in my hands yet. I'm going from from what research I found uh, online. Uh, getting into the motherboard, it's a TriGorilla V0.0.6, which is a few uh, iterations beyond. Uh, it's a 32-bit motherboard. Again, that's something that people consider essential. Just allows um, uh, allows for um, you know better uh, attachments, better um, uh, instructions to be sent to the printer. Newer technology um, have more uh, throughput through the motherboard and things, so that it can that it can accomplish these tasks without being overwhelmed, overheating things like that. Uh, so that's the that's the 2209 chips uh um and that's the it does say here silent printing and precise voltage output more accurate silent printing but i think i think that's not really well captured in this sentence without understanding exactly what they mean by that and really the 2209s have more granularity in movement which is smoother which is because it's making more smoother more small a lot of smaller movements it's quieter okay uh, motherboard we talked about uh, it is a 32-bit motherboard I was also able to oh auto leveling is a big deal so a lot of people get like uh, the BL touch or something on their printers uh, and add it this has built-in auto leveling um, it's 16 point auto leveling uh, so what what that looks like is essentially uh, there's this build plate here there's the print head they have to be um, sort of leveled or, or the relationship between the two has to be flat so that as the print head is moving across this surface uh, in very very thin laying down very very thin layers of melted filament of course if there's a, a variance here where maybe it's higher in the front than the back now you're gonna have either weird lines or deformities in your print or something else so the relationship between this print head and the print bed uh, or this printing surface needs to be level and that needs to be done pretty regularly uh, with a manually leveled bed you have to turn screws and there's a process uh, to, to move um, sometimes people put a piece of paper in between the print head and move it across with something like auto leveling or people will modify and put the put the BL touch what the BL touch is is just a little sensor uh, almost like a little um, trigger or touch point that drops down and touches various places on the print surface uh, and you you do that you can do that uh, and then it will say okay the printer understands what its relationship is from uh, from this print surface you you'll probably still want to level this out I, I pretty sure I see uh, there's probably a way under here to level this or maybe it comes factory factory leveled I bet there's a way to fine-tune it with like an Allen key or something if it's if it's ever off uh, too much but in any event this will come down those there's a program this is a touch screen by the way which I like uh, 4.3 inch touch screen that's probably not a must-have certainly not as important as bed leveling or the uh, stepper motor drivers but it is um, it is nice it's a nice to have I'll say having a having a touch screen here uh, there's a program here it runs a script on the head it comes down touches the surface in 16 different spots there's like a little bump stop on the end of the print head and it just kind of bumps into this surface uh, and levels the relationship between the print head and the print surface so you get a nice um, nice um, even print 
even layers as it's putting down the layers. So that's that's really cool. Is it critical? Maybe not. It's just it just helps when when it's something you have to do. Um, maybe not you know fairly regularly. I don't think it has to be done with every print, but every let's say x number of hours or something, you'll you'll want to sort of tune this up, and make sure that 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 relationship is good, making it that much easier. Automating it is is pretty helpful. Uh, the other thing it has is a 24 volt, 350 watt power supply. Uh, um, some of the previous AnyCubic printers had 12 volt power supplies. I'm not a fan of of that, only because it just sort of takes longer for the uh, print surface and the and the print head to to beat uh, heat up and come up to operating temperature. So you want to make sure that it can come up to operating temperature quickly and maintain those operating temperatures uh, well throughout the print. Uh, so having a having a good power supply um, will will help help to do that. So uh, as far as some of the other specs, I think those were those were the main main drivers for me. I like the I like the AnyCubic brand. I wanted something that was um, you know roughly this size of, of print area. It prints all of the filament types uh, that I was that I was hoping to do uh, and, and hoping to use. It uses Cura as the slicing software. You know, people are fans for or against Cura in some ways, but but at least that's the that's the out of the box supported um, software. I like that it has um, you know the the AnyCubic sort of build um, quality as far as as far as the physical machine is it looks to be well built uh and so when i was kicking the tires on this and i'm thinking you know i, I would like to get a a fdm printer uh and i was looking around it was just well timed that this happened to be launching i was actually looking at the anycubic um mega x or mega pro uh, i was sort of toying between the two of those i wanted something that was um uh, l like I said, though, you know, ev even those have have some of the shortcomings as far as either maybe a 12 volt power supply or some of the other um, kind of older motherboard specs, things like that. Uh, so I definitely wanted uh, it, this comes with all I think all of the essentials that you that most people would want to do as far as a bed leveler and the stepper motor drivers. Those are two really popular upgrades. Uh, like I said, really excited to see when this thing shows up. Uh, it looks like a um, pretty cool um, printer, um, and when I when I get it, I'll certainly be doing plenty of prints and plenty of videos about it. But I wanted to uh, uh, get my uh, m m my take on why I I thought this was a great printer and why people. Uh, if if you still have an opportunity to get in the first 3,000 units today, it looks like they are still um, still on pre-order, which is great. They kicked off the pre-order this morning. They had a uh, a live stream about about this printer, and a, a couple of YouTubers opined and and gave their uh, their quick input on it, which was really good to see. And then um, about a half an hour later, these went on print order in the U.S. and uh, I, I think parts of Europe, and so they are still on pre-order for $299. Uh, I think that's a great price point for all of what this comes with, uh, and it's really uh, looks to be a pretty solid machine. It is a Bowden uh, extruder type. You know, people don't some you know people think that's great. Some people think it's not so great. As far as and would prefer uh, some kind of direct drive, which which would mean that the that these two pieces, both the extruder and the hot end, are sort of right together instead of having some separation between them but um it's a it's a pretty short distance the uh the spool obviously is over here it feeds up right into uh into the extruder and then into it's a pretty short run to the to the hot end here and i think all of this i think all of this will just move down which will be fine because even from here if the if the spool is here it'll feed right in and and should maintain a pretty short run and be okay so We'll see. I'm excited. About a month that this should be here, and uh, I'll be able to to uh, start doing some FDM prints work. I'll be excited to work with diff different materials and things. Thanks for watching. I like to release videos every Friday, but some of these other uh, hot topic 
ones I put out uh, midweek or, or when they're available. So um, catch you on the next video.